Well, my name is Gilles, uh, I'm a gaffer. I've been in the film industry for about 23 years. I started off in 94 uh, as a PA back in Joburg. I uh, did that for about two years and I started working as a spark with Don Reed. I've been doing it ever since, you know. So it's been a long road, lots of ups and downs, uh, but I've pulled it through. I've got my own company now called Custom Lighting, uh, which I'm very grateful for. But I do prefer, at the moment, doing commercials. It's working out better for me. I mean, there is a huge market out there for commercials and feature films. And at the moment, I'm riding a, a good wave on the commercials. And it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's just as good as doing features for me. I'm busy, I'm getting creative. You know, every commercials has got a different feel, uh, different lighting field, different aspects. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's fun, you know, it's always different. Every week's different. I find features can be a little bit long sometimes, you know, I don't like to be away from my family at the moment. Uh, I've got an 11-year-old boy and I like to spend time with him, you know, and I also like to, to have a bit of freedom, you know. Uh, features takes that away from me. And um, yeah, I'm happy with commercials at the moment. I like it because it's always different, you know, the one day it's food, the next day it's kids and animals, the next day it's on the road, you know, doing tracking shots and uh, yeah, it's, it's nice, it's always different, which is what I like. I did this commercial about, this about five years ago. It was all underwater. Uh, it was a shipwreck. And because before the film industry, I did my commercial diving course. I used to dive for, for diamonds in the West Coast. So I'm a class two commercial diver. And to do underwater lighting, you have to be a commercial diver. So that's helped me a bit in different aspects of the film industry, underwater lighting. And there we had to, to use a lot of hydropowers, a lot of 18Ks from above the water and create, recreate sunlight and effects underwater. And it was, it was very creative, you know. It's not something I do every day, but when I do that, that's when uh, I'm more challenged, you know. And it's quite different to your normal commercials you do on land. Well, I'm obviously noticing a lot more with LEDs and uh, what LED can give. A lot of very good LEDs out there, a lot of not so good LEDs, you know. I like LEDs, you know, it's, it's, it's quick to use, it's, you can use batteries, um, you don't have to worry about power sometimes, especially if you're moving fast. Especially nowadays on, on, on feature films and ads, you've got to move fast, you know. The budgets are less and we're trying to shoot more, you know, so I think it's, a good, it's, it's good for the future, you know, and especially if you're going to move fast, LEDs is the way to go. Obviously, it depends what kind of light you want to give. If you want to recreate sun, you can't really use an LED. You've got to use a big HMI, a big 18K or a 6K. I really like the velvet light. Uh, the great thing about a velvet is that it's, it's waterproof, you know, so you can set it up on a car rig or outdoors. And if it starts to rain, you don't have to worry about rain cover. Um, and you can just let it, leave it on and it, and it works. There's no problem with it. It's actually made to be in the rain. And the, the color ratio is amazing, you know, there's no green in it, there's no magenta. It's got a bit more tungsten, it's 2,700 Kelvin, and it takes you right up to 6,500 daylight, which is true blue. And it's a beautiful light, it's really soft, you can add some uh, frames onto it, you can add an egg crate, a chimera, yeah, it's great. I, I stuck the, the 2 by one and also the, the one by one hard. Uh, the hard, it's got a hard little reflectors on that gives you extra light. It's a fantastic light to have. What well, I see already, you know, LEDs coming in hard at the moment, you know, especially on big shows, they're using a lot of um, Sputniks and those kind of digital lights with a Wi-Fi system that works on your iPad or your iPhone. And then the gaffer can just set it up next to the DRP and he can dim the light, change the colors. So for big budget movies, LEDs are the way forward, you know. Obviously smaller movies too, but um, I see it really working well for big features and it's already happening all over the world, you know. All the studios are using big LED lights and it obviously saves on, uh, saves on diesel and generators and, and ele electricity, you know. In the long run, it's cheaper. I see my role changing in, in the film industry, in lighting, especially um, with the LEDs. You know, I've got to keep up to the new systems that have come in and the new standards of lighting. You know, and it's a little bit complicated, but you know, obviously I've got to learn and I've got to stay on top of my game, basically. Um, huge competition. Um, you know, I do lose jobs sometimes, you know, over other people, but that's just the way it is, you know, and I've learned to accept that it's the same in any career. You know, there's a lot of people out there and I can't do all the jobs, you know. 
for me, it's all, all got to do with the DOP, the director of photography. Um, he chooses his gaffer, a person that he, that, that he trusts, that he's worked with a lot. And also, you know, as a director of photography, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, and your gaffer is going to be your right-hand man. And if you don't really know the gaffer, it's going to be tough. You know, you still got to build that trust before you can start the job, rather than coming onto a job knowing your gaffer, and then you can start knowing him well and you know what he's capable of. Coming in as a trainee spark, that's where you start. You got to be patient. You got to take a lot of uh, information. It's, it's, it's tough. And you got to work hard, you know. You, you're busy, you're on your feet all day. You got to pick up lights, you got to pack them away, unpack, pack. I mean, sometimes you unpack a truck three times a day, unpack it and repack it. So you're taking gear out of the truck three times and you're putting it back in three times. And my advice for them is just to stick it in and you actually got to have a passion for it. If you don't have a passion, you're going to have a tough time, you know, and you've got to also stay on top of your game, you know, you've got to listen to what's going on. What I got told when I was a spark was the best thing to do is to pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you're going to be a step behind. Pay attention and look at your gaffer. See what your gaffer is doing and your best boy and there you'll be fine. Don't go to the uh, catering table and have tea all the time.